Good afternoon, everybody. It's time for Facebook Live again. Hopefully you like the facelift that we've given our broadcast today. Uh, welcome. We enjoy this very much. Uh, I'm Kevin Jorgensen, member of the SIRE development team, with, along with today Rick Verbeek, my colleague who lives in Suncanic, Pennsylvania. We're kind of working remotely, trying out a new uh, format here. We hope you like it. It's been a great week again for Select Sires and Sire Summaries. We've had a busy week sorting a lot of data, uh, but over the course of the next 45, 50 minutes or so, we'll try to give you an update of what happened this week. We'll also uh, touch on some of the new graduates, some of the new young sires that are available, try to touch on all the product lines. Obviously, if you've got questions, always feel free to ask those, and we'll answer them the best we can. And the good news is today we've got uh, double trouble with the two of us, so if I don't know the answer, I know that Rick will. So getting into that, Rick, why don't you tell us a little bit about the highlights of the week? All right. Thanks, Kevin. And it's uh, definitely nice to be here and, and participating in the Facebook Live and sharing some of the exciting news with uh, the proof results here this week. And it's always a, a very, very busy week trying to digest and, and analyze all the information. And uh, we're still in the process of doing that. But I think as we uh, uh, get to the early stages of evaluating what happened, uh, I think we have to be very pleased with Select Sires and in our lineups uh, uh, product lines, how they perform uh, with the evaluations here in August. Uh, with every sire summary, there are changes, and, and uh, maybe just to touch base on a couple of those changes uh, that affected the evaluations this week. Uh, uh, as we stated uh, on a previous Facebook Live with uh, Chuck Sattler and Jeff Ziegler, there were some significant changes to the calving ease evaluations, and we highly encourage you to check out that presentation by those two guys to get into all the nuts and bolts of those changes. But um, um, essentially, a, a new phenotypic base was utilized. Uh, the ranges of calving ease and uh, daughter calving ease and the stillbirth traits are radically different. Um, but I think most important to understand is these new evaluations and percentages uh, much more accurately reflect the true dystocia and calving problems that we see in the population uh, here today. So credit to CDBC and, and all the researchers that uh, responded pretty quickly to the the results from April to investigate uh, what was going on and, and find uh, that there were some artificial inflations to those old evaluations. And I think what we have now are definitely new and improved calving uh, and stillbirth evaluations that we can use with a lot more confidence to truly reflect uh, the rate of dystocia and difficulties that we're experiencing. Uh, one of the other adjustments that took place uh, to the evaluations this time were new methods implemented to calculate expected future inbreeding. Um, the proofs that we see and use are all pre-adjusted um, for the future inbreeding to, to better anticipate or predict how bulls are going to respond and how the daughters are going to perform in your herds uh, based on normal uh, average inbreeding expectations that are going to occur. Uh, it's a very daunting task to get this right. Uh, there are 84 plus million records involved in that process to predict a future inbreeding. Uh, they've been able to develop new techniques to improve that analysis. And, and so we rolled out those new, new inbreeding coefficients here this time. Uh, that did cause a little reshuffling um, and, ch and change in the proofs. Um, a 1% increase in EFI is going to cost about $28 drop in net merit uh, and about a 25 to 30 point reduction in TPI. So when we look at the average changes of the bull that were active in April to their uh, August proofs, we basically saw that exact difference. Uh, <clears throat> bulls tended to drop on average $25 and 25 points uh, comparing their April to uh, August evaluations. So this new inbreeding adjustment should uh, uh, hopefully do a better job of predicting that and, uh, and cause a little more accurate evaluations for us moving forward. Uh, other than that, it was really a pretty stable evaluation. Not a lot of new daughter data moved bulls uh, positively or negatively, which is always a positive in, in the lives that we live uh, in trying to make accurate decisions. Uh, when we start to break down you know, our performance and how our lineups did, I think we have to be very, very excited. Uh, on the proven side of the world, you know, we're going to have seven of the top 10 TPI bulls, uh, 19 of the top 50, uh, and 29 of the top 100. And if we look at it from a net merit perspective, uh, we'll have three of the top 10, 15 of the top 50, and 25 of the top 100. So uh, our proven bulls certainly did uh, extremely well and, uh, and are holding their own. Uh, and we'll talk about the genomic bulls a little bit later, but uh, 
certainly, I think, very encouraged um, about how those bulls have done. But certainly start out with a couple of highlights. Um, talking about proven bulls, we've got two heavy, heavy hitters. Um, in uh, Helix, in Griff, right at the top of the list, uh, Helix uh, retains his ranking and status as the number one proven sire in the breed again. Uh, he's the number three net merit dollar bull. He's the number one fat bull and the number one CFP bull in the breed. Uh, bull that's really a game-changing sire, huge fat and protein, combined fat and protein, highly efficient kind of cows with a big feed efficiency score. Um, you know, and then just very, very pleasing cows. Uh, uh, balanced cows, they've got some added width, some stop, uh, depth with the brump. Uh, bull does a nice job of improving uh uh, leg side view, mobility, and uh, and just tremendous uttered cows, and certainly a customer satisfaction bull all the way around. Um, Silver Sun out of the great Halo family that we'll touch on several times uh, about the cow family behind these bulls and, and Helix and Halo family have certainly had huge contributions uh, to our program. Uh, another bull from our uh, our accelerated product line on another Silver Sun that's performed very, very well once again is Welcome Silver Griff, 14H7796. Uh, Griff, once again, is number four overall for TPI. He's the number six net merit bull in the breed today and another extreme fat bull at 107 pounds uh, and an extreme CFP bull, 163 pounds, which is going to be sixth overall for the proven sire population. Um, Again, customer satisfaction kind of cows. You see that nice group shot heifers and cows that have beautiful high wide rear udders, trouble free, moderate frame kind of cows. Uh, another bull with the really, really desirable foot and leg score information, uh, leg side view, track well, and uh, just another all around customer satisfaction bull. And another bull from a tremendous cow family that's been in the welcome stock herd for many, many years and, and always cows that took. Uh, rise to the top of their contemporary groups and uh, has resulted in a tremendous uh, proven sire here in Griff. Uh, Kevin you, know, Rick, you look at these two bulls and they're from great cow families. They meet tons of designations. The other thing is, is they have a lot of daughters. One of the things that you'll hear us talking about today is you see on the screen, bull like Griff that's got 1500 daughters already in his proof. Uh, he likes over 3,000 daughters. I looked the other day. We had 21 bulls in our lineup this time that are active. You have the opportunity to purchase semen on that added over 1,000 daughters to their proof. So in terms of progeny proven graduates, you can use them with a lot of confidence because they have a lot of data. I think that's really impressive. No, absolutely. And, uh, you know, those were a couple of the, the really standout bulls that were in, were in the lineup. And I know, Kevin, you're pretty excited to talk about a newcomer that joins those two bulls right up at the top end of the breed. Um, Absolutely. Our first new graduate of the class this time was uh, 14H13666, uh, uh, Duke Delroy. Uh, Duke's son, obviously been a very, very popular bull, and another bull right there in the top 10. And he's got a son that surpassed him already in Delroy. Bull at that 2,800 number uh, right at the top of the list uh, in the TPI list at number seven. He's in the top 15 bulls of the breed for net merit at 679. Really good udders. Uh, our highest proven uh, DWP bull at 932 in the Project Proven ranks. He's been a very popular super sampler, our super, our young sire, and he's already uh, won on his sire conception rate. So he's done a really good job of making pregnancies. So a bull that we're pretty happy about, used as a sire father, uh, did, did some nice things for us, some bulls like Bigelow. The thing that I'm really impressed about this family, wanted to share with you today, is knowing the cow family very, very well. It's in one of our, the mother is in one of our chart herds up uh, near Green Bay, Wisconsin, uh, the, ten, the, the Rogers uh, 10663. She maybe is the ideal commercial, modern commercial cow. She's a wide cow. She's about 57 inches tall. She's not big, but she carries that width out of her hips, her pins. She's got a wide rump. She's got a big rear udder. She tracks well on her feet and legs. A cow that, quite frankly, has just never been caught on the right day to go very good, but a, a cow that every time you see her, you say, that's what our customers want. A cow with width, a cow that milks well, uh, thrives in a commercial environment, those are the kind of cows you want to have a bull that's like this. The next AM's an 87-point Uno named Marianne that's out of Book and Modesto and then back into the Mindy. So it's a cow family 
that uh, has been very, very well known and prominent through our uh, situations. He's a bull that already on his first summer, he's got 140 daughters in his production proof. He'll continue to add data. Um, they're really sound commercial cows. The daughter of this photo there is in southern Wisconsin. Nice cow. So Delray is a really exciting new grad. Yeah, I think all the things you touched on there, Kevin, about him and that cow family are really showing up in that bull's uh, uh, DWP and Zoetis traits. Uh, that those trouble-free, com you know, commercial-friendly kind of cows that just pay the bills and, and aren't sick and, and always doing the job. Um, Another uh, new release bull here uh, that has been a very popular former G-Force bull is 7H12978 Leaning House Helix 22137, or more commonly referred to as House. Uh, this is a bull that's been a very popular selling bull for us throughout his, his uh, genomic uh, sales period. And now uh, with his early daughter proof with 93 daughters and 45 herds is, is certainly coming through with some really nice appealing data. Um, field reports uh, have been outstanding on, on this bull and the kind of cows that he's uh, siring, uh, those balanced frames, uh, ideal foot and leg structure, and really, really nice all-around udder improver. He's going to give you some height and width and capacity to the rear udder um, and also improve the fore udder attachments and, and yet carry that udder uh, up above the hock where it needs to be and should be on a young two-year-old and give her the chance to, to grow into uh, really profitable old cows. Um, house is a bull that um, really scores well, you know, on mastitis resistance. That's one of the traits that we're focusing on for the future to try to improve as we are sensitive to the, uh, the use of antibiotics and drugs and treatments on cattle. Um, if we can improve mastitis resistance and, and reduce the need to use those drugs, uh, I think that's a, a very positive direction for us. And house at 2.6 on his CDBC mastitis and plus 106 for Zoetis uh, mastitis. Uh, certainly it looks like a bull that's going to make some very positive strides there and throw in the added confidence of that real low somatic cell score. Um, we're excited about this hang time son uh, from another deep cow family that goes back to the Shadow May cow family um, and what this bull is going to contribute. He's always been a great fertility bull and he maintains a, a nearly point plus on SCR. So um, you know, the kind of bull that's going to sire those trouble-free, profitable cows, get cows pregnant uh, in the, with a full pedigree. Doesn't quite qualify for the top 100 list yet, but he'd be right about 30th uh, based on that TPI level. Uh, so he's right at uh, right at the top of the breed uh, from a standpoint of where he ranks on his overall index score as well. Uh, and those dogs have been really, really nice, folks. They're the right yeah. kind of cows. Yeah, I agree. Very, very positive reports up and down the road on him. And uh, another bull that the reports are starting to come in on in a positive way is 7H1374 Roland. Uh, one of our early modesty sons uh, to return back to our active lineup. A uh, bull that we've used very, very heavily as a sire father. Uh, he is the sire of our next-gen bull, Maximus, who's doing some really nice things for us. Um, but uh, an, an early graduate here with another full pedigree, again, once again, tracing back to the Shadow May Cow family. Uh, Roland debuts uh, at uh, 634 net merit, uh, which would be in our top 15 at Select Sires for Proven Bulls. Uh, he'd be in the top 30, 35 for, for TPI uh, with that TPI score uh, at 2703. Uh, another bull has been very popular as a, a G4 sire, uh, positive sire fertility at uh, 0.9 on his SCR. Um, another bull that uh, we, we hear a lot from a, a lot of our markets and international customers in particular that they like to see this diagonal linear, which means the top part of the linear chart goes off to the left, moderating size and stature, and yet the bottom side when you get to the legs and the udder goes off to the right. And, and Roland is a great example of that diagonal linear coming into place. Uh, and the other thing is we get some daughter reports and uh, you see a nice young young heifer pictured here on the screen, uh, a cow that's in our uh, art program, but um, mobility um, and modesty, I think, is going to bring that into the table. Roland appears to be uh, very, very favorable for that characteristic as well with that uh, moderate leg side view um, and good foot and leg score. And then a real nice evaluation for lameness through the Zoeta state at plus 105. So. Uh, a nice bull that uh, was used very heavily, as I said, as the G-Force bull to come back now and proven side of things and really uh, uh, deliver as promised. Uh, next bull, new graduate, is from uh, 
The Halo family here once again, and that's Cookie Cutter MD Hard Rock, 250H13736. Uh, he's another modesty son out of a 87 point capital gain, and then uh, certainly one of Mogul's uh, finest daughters, the Mogul Handy Cow, pictured on the screen there, the 94 point cow with the fabulous, fabulous udder. Uh, Hard Rock comes in with already now 200 daughters and 100 herds, and is uh, proven, and his daughter proof for production. Uh, 20 classified daughters and a few additional daughters scored here recently continue to trend very, very favorably here as well. Uh, at 1,900 pounds of milk and a point on utter composite, I, I did just a real quick sort uh, this morning. Uh, that puts them in really rare company. When you put extreme milk with great udders, uh, you're going to find he's one of about 20 bulls, proven bulls in the population right now. So uh, I think he's going to fit that market very well for udders and production, milk in particular. And uh, you know, an, another bull that's just been a really successful bull through the, the G, his G4 selling period and uh, trouble-free, no holes linear profile on this modesty son in Hard Rock, uh, and another successful bull from that Halo Helix cow family that's that's treated us so well uh, and treated our customers so well with the genetics that it delivers to their their breeding programs. You know, Rick, we talk a lot about this man-to-man -man Halo cow family and Helix's forage covered. These two moguls have just done an amazing job. We're going to talk a little bit more about it. Any of you that know us, the two of us might be just a touch on the competitive side. And uh, Rick's got this cow handy in his area. I got uh, Hanker in my area. And we like duking it out between these two cows and who can do a better job. The good news is they both do a great job. So it's a great new graduate hard rock. No, they both do a great job, and it's uh, we're very fortunate that we both get to work with the, the herds that ha house those cattle and their cow families and, and bring those great genetics to, to our customers through the bulls that they produce for us. Uh, another new graduate here, we had eight new graduates, uh, 7H12928 Dino, uh, something a little different here. Uh, a bayonet son out of a very good tango, and then an 88-point mogul that once again goes back to a great cow family. Uh, you'll recognize the, the names Felice and, and Raven back deep into this bull's pedigree. Um, so he, he's bred by design with uh, great breeders behind him and a, and a bull that uh, is uh, very exciting for us to introduce here to you today. Uh, he has been a popular bull in our G-Force program and, and sold very, very successfully uh, for a number of reasons. He He's uh, lost his official uh uh, SCR evaluation at this point. Uh, he'll get that back soon, but he was a, always a positive uh, fertility bull, and uh, he was a great calving ease bull, and then that unique pedigree. Uh, not a lot of bayonet sons out of tangos out there, um, but uh, this bull is now delivering. Again, Kevin mentioned data, uh, and our program is providing lots and lots of data on these bulls. 170 daughters and 58 herds, uh, 36 daughters in his type proof now. He is 82nd on the list for TPI. Uh, he's another bull at nearly 1,600 pounds of milk, uh, 70 of protein, and just short of two points on type. I did a quick sort this morning. Bulls 1,500 of milk and greater than 1.75 on type. Uh, there's only seven bulls in the entire breed that meet that criteria. Uh, he's one of the seven, and the other bull at the select program we'll talk about a little later is a bull called Doc. So uh, not saying this bull's in that same category, but to be in the same mentioned in the same breath means he's doing a lot of really good things. Uh, Dino is a, a A2 bull and uh, again, another really nice linear profile. He's a bull that's going to give you a little additional frame. So if you don't want to go backwards or moderate stature, this bull's certainly going to maintain frame scores. Um, he is to the right side of the linear chart on like side view, which is where I like to see him these days to improve uh, flexibility, the hawk and, and, and mobility, and then some uh, big high wide rear rudder kind of cattle as well. So uh, he's been a bull. We had a chance to see a few daughters a couple weeks ago, and you definitely liked what you saw in person and uh, very excited to see now his daughter data kind of substantiate that as a as an outstanding overall milk fat type and utter bull and, a, and an A2 sire on top of that. So um, exciting new graduate here to come back into active service in Dino. Dino, like you said, Rick, we just saw a group of these daughters and they're just, again, they're the cows that stand out in pens. People like them. I uh, classified at Mystic Valley last week and, and they were the pleasant surprise. They were a bunch of them uh, high, high good plus and, and just kind of popped out in the pens. And I think 
uh, he's again a bull that's just going to customer satisfaction. He's got great Um Next bull under the proven graduates here is a uh, bull in the generations product line 250H 13553 Silver Spike, a silver son from an 88 point JC daughter that uh, uh, picked to talk about this bull because I see his mother a lot. She's uh, over here in eastern Wisconsin, a cow that uh, is owned by Bob Webb and, and just continues to thrive, still in the herd. Uh, doing a really nice job and then a really deep pedigree that goes back behind that out in your neck of the woods, Rick. But a bull that has 320 daughters in his proof already. 214 herds is over two on type, two on udders, sound on his foot and leg, really positive linear profile, 1,200 pounds of milk. Uh, because he's a 250H bull, he was uh, sampled in Canada, top 25 GLPI bull in Canada as well. Uh, he's actually number 21. He's an A2A2 bull. Um, and he ranks right in the top 30 bulls of the breed for type, top 35 for udder composite. So he's in rare air when you put this all together. Uh, I like the fact that this bull spells milk uh, when you've got silver on the top side, snowman in the pedigree in the bottom side. Uh, I think this bull is going to do a lot of things right. Should work really, really well for our evaluators, a bull that should work really well in the SMS program. Yeah, you're exactly right, Kevin. And uh uh, another bull uh, coming to us from uh, New York Heritage and Pedigree is from Welcome Farm, 7H12962. Uh, and we can play with his name here, Marry a Doc, uh, if you're looking to marry a doctor or uh, marry Doc. But uh, regardless of how we're going to call this bull or how we're going to pronounce his name, uh, another bull that comes through from a, a really, really great cow family that's been around for a long time. We mentioned earlier, Griff. Well, this is the same family. Uh, he is... Uh, Rate relates directly back to that cow family pr that produced the silver grift that we talked about right at the front end of this. Um, and this this prophet son out of a miles out of an iota uh, with that pedigree and sire stack certainly gives you a lot of different avenues to utilize him within your uh, your breeding program. Uh, he is an A2 sire um, for beta casein. He's AB for kappa casein. Uh, this is one of those wellness trait specialists. He's 155 on his Zoetis uh, wellness trait dollars. 678 on DWP. Uh, you like to see that high mastitis resistance score at 104, another high lameness uh, prevention bull at 106, uh, and good scores for metritis and replain, retained placenta as well. Um, here's a bull that's certainly going to moderate size and frame, which is a lot of our herds are going to do. And it's, uh, but at 1.62 on that udder composite, and this is on 70 classified daughters, to get a bull that high in udder composite. Um, with frame traits that go that far to the left is pretty hard to do. And that's a pretty good indication to me that this bull is a definite utter improver uh, and a, and a go-to bull in, in helping uh, improve odor, overall utter conformation uh, while moderating size and while also adding a little flexibility um, uh, back into the breeding program. So uh, from a diversity standpoint, this bull becomes very, very unique. He's from a great cow family, as I said, that's doing some very special things. And uh, an exciting new wellness trait graduate here, an A2 sire uh, in Marriott to, uh, to to come back into our proven lineup this time. And the last of the uh, new graduates we wanted to talk about today is a bull that uh, I'm pretty excited about. Um, I think uh, does a lot of things right, a different avenue kind of bull. But 250H12975 Pharaoh uh, from Sandy Valley, a bull that through the spring and the summer, they just kept popping up. You'd see them, Kev, you'd walk through pens and you'd see them, and, and all of a sudden you look on the internet and there's another very good daughter scored, and the more of them you saw, the better that I liked them. And really got excited about this bull as the spring wore on. Um, and so he was pretty confident he'd be a graduate, and we put him into the Showcase Selections program, which typically we maybe kind of don those bulls earlier in their careers based on how they're bred and what their pedigrees are. But this bull checked every box that fits for a showcase selection site. He's got a great pedigree. His, his mother is arguably the best cow at Sandy Valley. Elisa Paradise is a marvelous cow, still in the herd. She's 93 points. She makes almost a ton of fat every year. She's got huge components. The next dam's an Uno that's 88 that's still in the herd, uh, doing well as an eight-year-old cow. And then uh, Planeta, who was a very good profit daughter, back to the Rudy Missies, is, is the third one. So I looked at his pedigree and say he checks that box. Then you look at his type proof. He's two on type. He's two on udders. 
a lot of very good daughters. They're hard top cows. They're balanced cows. Their udders are really well made. So he kind of checks that box as well. But the other thing that I think makes this bull so appealing to fit into our uh, showcase program is that he has no Goldwyn, no Doorman, and no McCutcheon in his pedigree. And that is certainly sort of a holy grail that everybody's looking for in terms of what do I breed all my King Docs to? What do I breed uh, my uh, King Boy daughters to? Here's a bull that should fit really, really well on a lot of the blood that's out there, the Diamondbacks. He's just got a lot of needs for what he does. On top of that, he's a good cell score bull, mastitis resistance bull. He's good on sire fertility, been a very, very popular uh, G-Force bull, uh, particularly internationally. And then you add in the fact that he's A2-A2, he's BB on cap casein, a bull that's just going to do a lot of things really, really right. The daughter photoed here is one that's 84, again, at Summit Farms and Bob Webb's. And I just showed the sire team about 11 or 12 of these that we locked up a couple of weeks ago. And and I wanted to make him a believer, and I, and, and I think I did, Rick, but I, th I think this is a bull that, that just fits a really, really unique niche in our lineup. Well, I, I agree, Kevin. And uh, behind the scenes, we sometimes do a little politicking uh, for bulls that we think ought to go back to active service or see some additional usage. And uh, Kevin was definitely in full-blown political mode uh, uh, promoting this bull every opportunity. But uh, I would say after seeing the daughters, uh, and then getting this information here this week, uh, you didn't have to politic too hard. This bull's a no-brainer, um, and, uh, and seeing is believing, and that's that's one of the things we were fortunate enough to have a chance to do. But when you can line up 10 or 15 daughters um, and just see heifer after heifer with tremendous utter and balance and correctness and milking well, uh, he was a pretty easy graduate. And uh, not saying we saved the best for last of the new bulls, but uh, – uh, he's certainly a bull that fits in nice to our conversation here this morning at this this particular spot, and uh, an exciting new graduate for sure that uh, has some good things coming. And the bull that follows logically right behind him is a bull that both Rick and I can speak to. Uh, probably one of the most exciting uh, news items of the sire summary was seeing King Doc add a boatload of data now with almost 500 dollars in his proof. 150 scored and more every week, because if you look at Holstein's new scored daughters, uh, this bull has got a lot of them on a weekly basis. But Doc moving all the way up to the number 16 slot on the TPI list, adding 300 pounds of milk, moving up on his tight proof. He's number three tight bull in the breed. Uh, there's just so many things that we could talk about this bull. But I just kind of wanted to talk with Rick about it, because obviously we've had a lot of success with this bull. Uh, I get to talk about him a lot because of showcase, but by the same token, Rick's the one that knew the family, brought the bull in, acquired him. Tell us a little bit about the process on, on getting this bull in. Well, it's, as like a lot of them, a little bit of luck involved, but, uh, you know, you have to give the, Dr. Crookshank and the, the Woodcrest team a lot of credit for, for doing a lot of the work with the cow family and, and, uh, and making things happen back in the day, you know, he was a bull that, quite honestly, when we brought him in, it was not a slam dunk decision to bring the bull in. Uh, he had nice milk and he had nice tight, but he certainly wasn't a net merit bull. He wasn't a TPI bull. He didn't fit any any selection index necessarily, um, but he had milk and type. And as select sires, that's always been two traits that we're very proud of and, and two traits that our customers greatly appreciate are good cows that milk. And uh, so, you know, we brought this bull in and to watch him evolve and develop is has been, you know, very remarkable to see him 16th on the TPI list. I don't think any of us thought that we'd ever see this um, from an overall index evaluation standpoint. But, um, you know, he's a bull that just has a cool cow family. It's, keep in mind, Woodcrest is a 2000 plus cow dairy. Uh, these cows do their thing out in the freestyle uh, like most of our customers cows do. Um, Mac is a bull in the pedigree that I absolutely love and, and uh, what he makes and the kind of cow that he makes. I mean, she was an 88 point cow and the next dam was a 91 point snowman. Um, you know, it was a great milk cow and 91 points and just a dairy machine, a cow anyone would love to own. And, you know, then we kind of forget a little bit what we act like this bull maybe came from nowhere. But if you go back, uh, talk about cow families and we still do, you know, there's cows named debutante Ray uh, Tony Ray back in this bull's cow family. So um, it maybe isn't entirely a surprise that we're dealing with one of the, the really, truly great tight bulls of the breed right now. Nope. 
<clears throat> couldn't agree more, Rick. And and you know, the oldest has been uh, obviously very popular, and you guys have all found him because we sold over two hundred thousand doses of semen as a as a G force bull, and as a proven uh, bull, he's going to continue to to be in high demand. Uh, you check that extra box where he's BB cap casein and and uh, there's been just a, a lot of things right in this bowl going back through the Roxy's. But the other part of the story I'll tell is that, you know, it was a bit of a struggle. Rick said it was a struggle to get him in. It was more of a struggle uh, to get him used as a sire father. But uh, I can remember sitting down with uh, Charlie Will at dinner at the end of the year one year and said, hey, I want to use this bowl as a sire father. I'd like to send a little more semen than normal out. And, and uh, uh, he gave me the chance to do it, and, and, and we all used them some. But I, the, the ability to use the bull as a sire father is moving us in, in, in the next directions with this bull. And I think I wanted to touch briefly where we're at on that. And, and if you look at his sons, uh, one of the first ones, and this was the kind of bull that Seamers has loved because he's milk and type, as Rick mentioned. And uh, we talked about Mogul Handy and Hard Rock a few months ago. They had acquired a cow named Monterey or uh, Mogul Hanker, who's still in the herd. She's been a breeding machine, and she had a bunch of Montereys, and, and uh, we started using Doc, and, and he gave us some great success. There's actually three brothers to Hancock, um, Han Hanford and, and Handsome as well. I want to talk about Hancock today. He was the first one. He does a few things better than Doc. He's a little higher in type. He's a little higher in utter composite. You look at his rear to height and width at over four points on rear to height and width. The other thing that Hancock did that I thought was significant was that he was A2A2. And as good as uh, Doc is, he's A1A2. So the ability to, to make a, a beta casing bull that would met some different markets was a good thing. And then as we're starting to see the calves come out, the, da the daughter pictured here on a slide, uh, it was junior champion at a show here in Wisconsin a few weeks ago. Uh, she was out at the summer na uh, national Holstein show in West Union, Iowa yesterday. She was second in her class of 31. Uh, so he's making those pretty, pretty calves and doing a lot of things right. So it's exciting that we've got a bull like Hancock and his brothers to bring the doc influence another generation farther. The next one is we already have doc grandsons. 250H, 15322 Hanley, uh, also from Seamers, is out of Hancock's full sister that you see pictured here. She just won 88 points as a two year old uh, a week ago. And he does some things even a little different again. He's a little more balanced, get that, that uh, uh, rump angle just a little bit uh, to the slope side with Alvarez. And that's a significant thing that we thought was unique about the bull. He's a good component bull. He's also A2, A2 again. Um, and a bull that, that, again, meets multiple needs. He ranks high in confirmation in Canada. That's why he's a 250H bull. Um, this is, so we've been able to, to utilize to the point that Doc is at the height of his popularity. We have sons and grandsons of the bull already, which I think is significant. I'll mention one last thing on this before I'm going to turn it back to Rick. It's almost a, there is another brother to this bull, uh, and his name is Hanan, 7H 15325. And I've seen a lot of people asking about the bull. Uh, he is a uh, Excalibur brother to Hanley. He's 3.75 on type in 2893 TPI. He will be available to you in October, and he will be getting released sex only. So keep your eyes peeled for him. But I want to point out Hanley because he's a new bull that way. But the other part of this doc discussion is, is we're so uh, fortunate to have him and what he's done, but we need bulls that are a little different. And I wanted to talk, bring, talk about a couple other bulls that are a little different in their sire stacks to fit on the doc daughter. So Rick, this is two bulls from your area. Yeah, Kevin, uh, and two pretty exciting young bulls as well. And uh, kind of similar stories behind the background, but you know, we're constantly challenged in the showcase program and our total program, you know, to identify new cows, new families, and, and uh, uh, anticipate the direction that we want to go with certain certain things. And, uh, you know, Oakfield Corners has been a great uh, partner herd with Select Sires for a long time, and um, they have been invested uh, heavily in lots of new cow families over the years. And, and one of those families that uh, has performed very well for them uh, is this Missy cow family. Uh, Goldwyn Missy way back in the day was one of the you know, premier household names in the breed. And 
they bought into that cow family and have bred that family now for several generations. So I've had a chance to kind of watch uh, uh, this Delta Misty 4212 uh, grow up, so to speak, uh, along with her McCutcheon Dam. Uh, they're both 94 point cows. Uh, uh, Delta's uh, 94 with a 97 point udder, and you see her in her working clothes uh, here on the screen. But uh, you know, she's she's had the very competitive genomic evaluations, but has certainly developed into a great individual cow and kind of the modern type of cow that, that we want to take this program to. And so uh, we've been fortunate to have a couple of exciting sons from from Delta Missy here that, um, Kevin, I'll let you talk about maybe in a little more detail, uh, but uh, just new to the market and, and ready to go is is this Mystic Crush Bull that I know you're pretty excited about. Yeah, I was really happy to acquire not just this bull, but multiple bulls. Uh, Jonathan had told me about this cow family. I had the chance to see it when I was out there last spring and was highly impressed. And and uh, uh, one, having an early crushable son that did a lot of things right, that different kind of pedigree that uh, brings Delta into the pedigree and probably his best daughter. And you can see her in her working clothes right there. She's 97 points in the other. So you bring in a bull that has two right at tight to three and tight, right tight to three and udders. Uh, very balanced in his profile. Again, he just fits our modern definition of a showcase bull. And so he's available now. He was released here this week. I wanted to also bring you up to speed on his brother named Thunderstruck. He's a thunderstorm brother. He will be released in just uh, in about three weeks in September. Uh, again, those positive components, maybe just a tick higher on overall type, uh, just a little taller, a little longer, uh, but not too tall. And that's one of the things that I should have mentioned when we talked about Hancock and Hanford and, and all of those, we're trying to moderate that stature because I hear from the, the discriminating type guys that they want to moderate it just a little bit. They don't need a five point stature bull and, and we're not deliberately trying to make those. So these two bulls from one of Jonathan and Alicia's favorite cow families just made sense to bring these in and a lot of positive buzz on the thunderstorm heifers made sense to bring in a thunderstorm son. Uh, with that, Rick, we got a couple of questions here, and uh, thought maybe we should touch on it in the, in this uh, uh, vein. Uh, Anna Luisa has a question on how's Tropics Dam's performance. Um, not exactly sure what to tell you on that, as we acquired the bull uh, through the accelerated program. Uh, but what I can tell you about Tropic is he's the next generation bull that we're using on the docks. And Tropic had a nice day; he's two point seven on type yet. Uh, he's a bull that we've used uh, as a next generation sire father uh, to make the next set of showcase bulls because we think he's just a little unique again into the marketplace to bring an alternative sire stock in. So a bull that we've uh, been really, really happy about in terms of how he's performed. Uh, bull is a marvelous individual himself, but uh, we're, we're pretty excited about Peak Tropic and what he does. Yeah, I just to add to that, I mean, the I don't have the, her exact performance information in front of me, but you know she uh, his dam is scored very good. Uh, uh, eighty five points, a Rubicon daughter. The next dam is uh, an Epic Q that's eighty six, uh, and then you start to see some pretty recognizable names again. That goes back to uh, Man O Man Hugh, and then Shottle Hollerwood, and so we're right back into that Helix uh, cow family, that Halo cow family that's that's performs so well. So uh, I, think, I think we're pretty confident in the cow family behind Tropic. And, and certainly, as you said, Kevin, uh, have some pretty high expectations for what he's going to do down the road for us as well. And we just got a little help from one of our friends who said that uh, she's well balanced and living in a large commercial dairy in Wisconsin. So can completely answer that question for you, Anne Louise. So like I say, we wanted to spend just a, a couple of minutes as well talking about genomic young sires and what's available and what can I get from my technician or off of my sales truck? Because some bulls, uh, we'll talk about next gen in a moment, those bulls are directly delivered to your farm. What do my technicians and salespeople have on their trucks that I can use and utilize uh, without restriction uh, in the industry? We had several here we wanted to talk about. The first one, a bull that uh, we released in June, 250H15156, Larcrest Captivated, a riveting son. Uh, so he's a, a Fraser grandson. But I really like the bottom side of his pedigree, and it traces in. And you talk about hotline or uh, tropic being a hotline son. Captivating has got a hotline dam. She's already 86 out at Larcrest. The next dam just went 87. She's an Oktoberfest, and then it's a little different fork of the of a cosmopolitan cow family 
um, not through kale or some of the other really well-known cows, but it traces that really good cow family at Lard Crest, so you can use with confidence. He's 2944, probably the highest bull that's out there that that has no restrictions to him. He's good in his fitness traits. He's a good DPR bull. But then putting that uh, Lard Crest stamp of high type, good udders, A2A2, A2, uh, a bull that I think is really unique in terms of how he's bred and and what he can offer. And, and at 2944, just exceptional high TPI that's available to you. Rick, why don't you tell us about touts? Yeah, I'd be happy to. And, you know, before we get too far down to some of these new bulls, you know, we just talk about rankings on the proven bulls and, and uh, trying to rank and figure out what uh, what's available in the genomic list is always a little trickier. Uh, and uh, that is what it is and how bulls are reported and when they're going to be released and available for marketing. But I think, again, on, on our young bulls, we feel really good about how they performed uh, uh, without knowing exactly who's available across the industry. When we look at the top 100 TPI lists, uh, the bulls we reported, uh, we have 41 of the top 100. Uh, from a net merit standpoint, uh, we've got 27 of the top 100 and 47 of the top 200. So, you know, these bulls we're going to talk about, I think we feel really, really good about uh, how they're going to rank and how they're going to perform. And while we might not be exact on our rankings on some of these comments, uh, we certainly like what they're going to provide to our customers. And uh, we talked uh, on the Proven Sire section about a, a really nice new Proven Bull from Leaning House, uh, a bull called House. And here we've got, a, a, I think, a really exciting new release uh, to our G-Force program in 7H15112 Taos. Uh, he's a renegade son out of a Jedi from a, an 88-point Tatum uh, and then an excellent Gabor, uh, one of my favorite bulls of all time and uh, and probably the best Gabor daughter that, uh, that ever was, uh, bred by Bob Webb. But uh, uh, Taos is a bull that we've used very heavy as a contract mating sire, um, and he's really going straight from a contract mating sire to publicly available on and on the trucks. Uh, he'll be in the top 20 uh, TPI bulls of, of the bulls that select sires that are going to be available, and, and uh, he was one of the earliest renegade sons, um, was a little bit slow making semen, so he's a little later coming to the market than we would have liked, but uh, sometimes you've got to let let uh, the bulls grow up and learn their craft and uh, he's got it figured out now from a semen production standpoint but I think just a beautifully balanced bull um, you know he's plus 6 percent fat and protein uh, nice milk amount solid type beautiful linear profile um, BB kappa casein uh, we talk about beta casein a lot but beta casein is, is an equally important characteristic for cheese making purposes and this bull has that dire, desirable combination for for Kappa casein. Um, and the other nice thing about his pedigree, uh, you know, there's no Frazzle. Uh, Frazzle has been a hugely successful bull for us, but with that success, you need to find other options on what are you going to breed uh, your solutions and your Tahiti's and in the Frazzles themselves too. And I think Talos with his pedigree uh, becomes a, a really nice option uh, in that respect and, and uh, a bull we really, really like. Another renegade son uh, that's uh, coming to available to you and on the trucks is uh, Rashan, uh, 14H14982. Uh, it's a bull, it's a product of our art program. Uh, his dam's a, an Achiever Paula that's uh, just a beautiful young cow, just recently scored 83. Uh, goes back to the 9882 cow family, so some proven success with bulls like Samurai. Uh, on our proven list here as well to kind of validate this cow family. But Achiever Paula has been a great donor for us uh, and has calved out beautifully. He's got more points in her future, just needs to grow up a little bit uh, uh, before that can happen. And, and it certainly will. But uh, Rashawn's one of those sleeper bulls that just keeps getting a little bit better with each and every proof round. You look at some of the changes that occurred in the industry. Uh, he, uh, he defied the gravity and, and actually stayed exactly where he was from April. So you're talking about a, a 2,900 uh, TPI bull, uh, 814 net merit, which by some of my math, he could be one of the top 10 or 15 net merit bulls in the breed, uh, not just select sires, but in the breed um, available for purchase off the trucks. So uh, I think he's a pretty special elite bull. Uh, you see those high mastocytis resistance scores once again. Um, and then that pedigree being renegade achiever profit, uh, frazzled mogul free, uh, the door is kind of wide open to use this bull uh, as you will and wherever you will. Uh, his brother, 
is uh, by Legacy, a Surefire, 7H15053. Uh, here's another bull. It had a really nice day. So same cow family, same tremendous dam and achiever Paula here, uh, this time sired by Legacy. He's one of our first Legacy sons uh, to be in our G-Force lineup. Uh, here's a bull again. He's uh, well over 2,900 TPI, uh, over 800 net merit. And that 838 net merit, again, by process of elimination of who's really available and who isn't, uh, there's a difference between active and available. Um, I like to look at available bulls that you can actually purchase and use in your breeding program. But I believe this bull is going to be in the top five net merit bulls of the breed uh, with semen available, uh, which is a uh, pretty lofty number. Again, tremendous uh, mastitis resistance for CDBC, low somatic cell, 108 pounds of fat. Um, a bull we used as a mating sire uh, for our sons uh, for the next generation and uh, just a really nice, uh, two nice brothers here by Renegade and Legacy uh, to, to start us off on some of these exciting G-Force bulls. <clears throat> and I'll mention on these Legacy sons, I mean, that era has already started and and another one that uh, is actively available is 7H15137 Malaria Legacy Beanie. And, and he's a legacy son uh, out of Frazzle Fandango, a, a heifer that we had worked in partnership with Spencer Hackett. And a lot of success, a lot of maternal brothers for this bull uh, that are they're available. But I wanted to touch on Beanie in the sense that when we're in development, we let you guys decide what fits best for your breeding program. And, and we just try to make something that meets the needs of everybody. And Rick talked about those diagonal bulls a moment ago. And this is another bull that does that in, in, in Beanie. He's a, if you want to moderate stature, these legacy sons definitely are going to do that, but yet with really sound utter traits. And that's what Beanie does. He's a high production bull at 1800 and does it like you'd expect with a lot of frowns of blood in his pedigree, really low somatic cell score. He's A2, A2, does a lot of things right. Uh, Fandango was lost as a heifer, but she has two uh, clone sisters that just won 85 and 84. So she was a great heifer, looked good, unfortunately lost, and then goes back into Spencer's signature cow family, uh, the Belisto, and then Bogo Freck and, and Super Freestyle, and they were both excellent cows. So pretty excited about what Beanie's going to do. The other thing I wanted to mention, I know that in this, and I, we'll get to some of these questions, I just want to let you know, folks, we're not forgetting about it. Really a lot of questions on red. I wanted to talk about this red and white, uh, red carrier bull that's out there, and that's 250H 14465 Ronald. And Ronald to me is a bull that I think, when it's all said and done, may have some similarities to King Doc. He's bred very similarly, same cow family, he's a Roxy. But Ronald is the number four uh, red or red factored uh, bull in the breed for genomic young bulls. He's sired the number one red bull of all ages in the world at the moment, the red and pulled bull in the world. Uh, so this bull's gonna have a really significant impact on our program in the future, and he's already uh, selling really well. The heifers are fantastic. He's a two, two, and two bull. We don't have a lot of those anymore. They're two on type, two on udders, two on feet and legs, sound production bull, good mastitis traits, BB Kappa casein, uh, just a really exciting bull in our red program. And I wanted to point out, I got a text yesterday afternoon that his mother, the Silver Royalty Cow, uh, just won excellent 90 yesterday. So this bull has 12 excellent dams all the way back to Roxy. So uh, cow families still matter, and they matter to us. And, and I thought that was a neat uh, addition that uh, Royalty won excellent yesterday. It's a great cow family. A lot of bulls coming uh, from uh, the Trentway Genetics Program. But uh, really, if you're looking for red and whites, Ronald is, is right there at the top of the heap. Couple new bulls that we wanted to mention to you that used to be in next gen, and we're going to finish up this afternoon with some next gen and your questions. But in the case of next gen, um, those bulls won't stay in the program forever. Uh, they're going to cycle their way through, and we're going to talk about a couple bulls here now that are moving from the next gen program uh, to the technicians and the trucks. And the first one is seven H fourteen three sixty four, Sandy Valley Isaku is his official name. I've heard him called Isaku Isakau. Uh, Danae assures me that the official pronunciation is Isaku, so that's what we'll call him today. But whatever you call him, you got to find him. And he's the the uh, samurai son out of eternity. Uh, Could have showed you a daughter in, in the professional photo of eternity. It's a great photo. I like shots of cows when they're in the working clothes and eternity part to part, piece, piece to piece. Again, one of the great cows that uh, Sandy Valley's ever had. 
uh, in in their barns, and, and she's got a huge impact. She's got six sons here at Select, more to come. Uh, he's just a very balanced bull. You look at his, his credentials for production, no glitches. You look at his fitness traits, no glitches. You look at his um, linear profile, you got to like it. He's A2A2. He's good on fertility. Just a really, really balanced bull. The heifers are extremely impressive. We're mating some of those now. So a great bull that you can add to your breeding program from uh, one of, in my mind, one of the great cows of the breed in eternity. Yeah, I, he is a great, she is a great cow. He is a great bull and, and a huge contributor to the next gen program and now publicly available. And another, another bull that's now publicly available and released from next gen or a next gen graduate is 250H14134 Renegade. Uh, bull with kind of an interesting story behind his name uh, because he was outcrossed and the dare to be different. We were having some conversations about daring to be different and being a renegade. And lo and behold, uh, Jeff had uh, had this bull in the works and had him developed and made. And uh, with Mark Kern's brilliant idea, uh, hence this bull's name of renegade as being something truly different. And, and he is that, and he is really delivering, you know, everything that we could have uh, expected or hoped for this Jalta Oak out of an 85 point Millington, uh, uh, and then a Da Vinci, and then a, then a, a snowman behind that. Uh, uh, you know, you can look at all the traits here that the bull excels in. He's a great DPR bull. He's plus one four on mastitis resistance, uh, plus 102 on the Zoetis traits. He's another BB Kappa casein bull. Uh, we talked about several of his sons now available. We're going to talk about several more of them that are coming available in the next gen program following uh, in Renegade's footsteps. But I think the nice thing about this bull is, you know, when you get a chance to go out and look at heifers, uh, you just like them. Uh, you like them a lot. Uh, they've got that width and strength and dairy strength and power, uh, beautiful feet and legs, uh, utter potential and promise looks really, really good underneath these heifers. Um, he's, he's just one of those bulls that, uh, Kind of dared to be different and is really delivering uh, some really positive things. We look forward to them starting to calve uh, here in another six months or so. Um, we have 50 sons of Renegade uh, uh, in our program. Uh, and Kevin, I think you've got several more that you'd uh, probably like to touch on here next. Yeah, we're going to touch on it. We've had a few of them already that, that you touched on. And, and we're going to move kind of to the next gen program. And we, we've not touched on this. I want to thank all of you that are part of it. Uh, this program has grown by leaps and bounds. It's a, definitely a, a tremendous success. And it's getting us access and getting you semen on bulls at 15 months of age instead of 22 or 23 months of age. So it's accomplishing everything that we want to do uh, to protect the sire program, also give you access to improve your herds. And, and if you haven't, uh, uh, join Next Gen. I encourage you to go to the SelectSire's website and sign up. Uh, it, it, it really is an opportunity to get into the front end of these bulls. And, and uh, so I wanted to spend the first one it, it I'll talk about is our, our three renegade sons that uh, all came from this neck of the woods and very happy to talk about them. And the first one is uh, 14H 15223 Sandy Valley Conway. Uh, virtually the highest bull uh, that you, one of the highest bulls that you can purchase with semen available in sex semen, conventional semen, uh, through next gen at 3007. He had a great day again. Uh, he has tremendous sense. You can see the credentials again, just basically clicks every single box. A2A2, BB Kappa Casey, no frazzled in his pedigree. Uh, Sandy Valley had some photos of the Draco uh, Dam, uh, Grand Dam today, and Mogul Calamity and 92 Point Mogul is the third dam. So it's a great, great cow family for them again. And you look at this bull, I can't imagine that there's not a place in almost every breeding program for a bull that's this unique and does that many things right. From what good a cow family uh, and just a white bull at the right time and a bull that we've used really heavy as a contract mating site. The second one is a, a 7H15085 Seamers Renegade Perfect. And, and uh, he is, again, one of the most unique bulls in the industry. Uh, again, you can see his mother there pictured in her working clothes at the genetics barn at Seamers Holsteins. She's got a great side view, but I just love this angle of this cow. She is the number four cow of the breed as of this morning in terms of her overall. So she's a high genetic cow in the breed. Then uh, her granddam, Denver Paris, just went excellent 91 with her second lactation. 
And then it goes back into the same cow family that gave us Petty and uh, done a lot of things right uh, at Seamers Holsteins. The bull actually gained a little uh, relative. He kind of defied gravity, as Rick said. 29.91, 155 a combined fat protein. A, a bull that just defines what Seamers try to do. High type, high production, great casings. And again, a bull that uh, not only have we used as a contract mating sire, I am continuing to use as a contract mating sire because he just does a lot of things right. The last bull that that, uh, that I'll talk about is uh, 250H 15152 uh, Blumenfeld Renegade Ahead. Uh, again, a bull that had a great day because he's a very outcross pedigree being a renegade from a miles. It's just shy of 3,000, 2,990, but a huge percent bull. Not a milk bull, but a percent bull, but still gets you the pounds. He's good on his fitness traits again. He's BB Kappa casein, with exceptional amestitis resistance. And, and I know that, uh, Wesley, you asked the question about uh, the Miles daughters. And again, uh, they're really nice cows. We've been very, very happy with them. Know that cow family very, very well uh, up at uh, uh, the Prasoskis at, at WTA. WT Holsteins. They do a great job. I was in uh, uh, Minnesota just a month ago and I saw Miles's mother and she's a plus cow that is later in lactation, a tremendous width. She's a wide cow again, shorter in stature. So really defines what this bull's probably doing in this linear profile. I think she will move up and score. She calves again and she is due back. Then the next name's a very good yoder, but a bull that we're really, really happy about. So Allowed me to kill two birds with one stone, uh, Wesley. I wasn't way, I wasn't uh, trying to avoid it, but uh, we like the Miles's a lot, and and one of the really good ones is a head one. Well, and another renegade son that uh, is pretty exciting to introduce into the next gen program is this uh, renegade extra P seven H one five three four nine. This bull's pulled, and uh, he will be the number one pulled bull for TPI with semen available in the breed at twenty eight fifty. He's 731 net merit. Uh, he's a BB Kappa casein, a, A1, A2 beta casein bull. Uh, in the world of pulled, uh, this is a pretty special bull. And uh, high combined fat and protein bull with a nice linear profile. Another bull that we've used uh, uh, a long, long time, or I shouldn't say a long time. We used a lot as a mating sire uh, here over the last few months and taking a, a step forward with our pulled program. Uh, this bull is uh, a next generation kind of a bull, and uh, I think we think it's going to be an exciting difference maker for us um, in moving us along and moving us ahead in the pulled population. And uh, the last uh, next gen bull, and then we'll get to some of these questions here if we can. Uh, uh, a bull that we released here uh, a month or two ago into the next gen program is 14H15201 Moonshiner. Uh, a fly higher bred bull at the heaty sun. Uh, again, uh, another full pedigreed bull. A dam's an 87 point flagship you see here on your screen. Uh, next dam's a, an 87 point uh, Delta. Uh, another bull that goes back to the uh, the Goldwyn Missy cow family that we talked about before. Um, on the, the showcase selection side of the family uh, with Thunderstruck and Mystic Crush, uh, we're back into the more genomic uh, GTPI side of the family here with Moonshiner. Um, he's a bull we've used a lot as a mating sire. Uh, it's a very easy bull to use uh, with those utter scores in particular and expectations for a bull. It's going to improve utters tremendously. Uh, 207 feet efficiency bull, uh, great productive life, high DPR, good fertility index, um, and a bull that's plus 0.14 on, on mastitis resistance. So we did have a little a question earlier about if I interpret the question right, the mastitis resistance and what, what do we consider bulls um, to be, you know, what do they need to be to be mastitis resistant? And so we have a couple different traits that we're measuring mastitis with um, through CDBC. Uh, you know, to me, if you get a bull, it's plus one or greater uh, as a bull, it's going to move you in the right direction on uh, uh, increasing your mastitis resistance or, or lowering your mastitis rate. And, and on the Zoetis side, you know, plus 105 uh, puts you one standard deviation ahead. And uh, I guess those would be the two benchmarks I would use for, for mastitis resistance and looking at bulls that are going to help you uh, improve your uh, your status in, in that particular category. So I'll add one more thing to that because it's a great question. And, and thank you for your patience on that to, to get to it. We've done a lot of uh, genetic audits here. We do that a lot. Uh, our team, not so much us as the sire team, but but our SRS specialists 
And if you do some genetic audits and look at data by quartile, these higher mass, the, the better mastitis resistance bulls have a lot less incidence, their cell scores are lower. Uh, and so we're, we're, we're highly in believing that this is the future and where we need to move. And so we're doing a lot of work uh, on mastitis resistance and it's, it's a main emphasis of what we're selecting for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll tackle a question here, Kevin. Uh, David had asked the situation with Hody Doe and uh, how are they looking? Uh, Hody Doe did get a daughter proof uh, here this time with uh, 83 daughters and 24 herds. Uh, so, so getting started, uh, didn't have an official type proof yet, but we have certainly liked what we've seen in the field. Uh, got some daughter pictures already, really nice uttered young cows. Uh, moderate production bull based on his early proof. Uh, he did not, he was a candidate for graduation, uh, didn't quite have enough semen to, to release him into the, the active lineup at this point. And so uh, uh, that's kind of the update on him at the moment. And I'm trying, oh, the, I'll, I'll take call Hank's question uh, about next gen. And um, depending on where you're at, and uh, based on uh, your name, Hank, I'm wondering, I'm suspecting that you're in the Netherlands. Um, we're working country by country to, to do that. And if you visit with your worldwide sire staff uh, in, in any of the countries that you're in, they can help you or let you know when uh, Next Gen will be available. It is in several uh, countries in Europe. Uh, it's available in Canada. Um, and so uh, just keep a, a close eye and visit with your worldwide sires people as to whether or not the program is available to you in your respective countries, but it is a global program. And, and uh, like I say, it's had a lot of success and, and uh, talking about six figure uh, sales numbers that are doing really well. And, and, and maybe more importantly, since the program started, we're now seeing some people that are getting results of those calves and they're having great success. And that's a real important part of why we're doing this too, is to help our customers. Yeah, we have one other question here. I'll, I'll take that. You can take that on logistics. No, I was looking at the Brent's question here on red homozygous in positive DPR, which gets to be a little bit tricky. But uh, there is a bull in the system here. You'd have to contact your rep to see what uh, kind of semen availability is in. Uh, uh, and I just lost them. I had them on my screen here, but. the SunQuest bred bull that we have in the system. Oh, Barracuda PP. Yep, and he is available. Barracuda PP red. So that would be what we would tell you to run at those Zeke daughters. With. Yep, and then we do have a few options if you just drop down to polled in red, but uh, the homozygous polled DPR gets to be a little uh, a little bit trickier to, to accommodate. So why don't you tell them about logistics? You know the cow family very well, and We've got a red bull that, uh, again, we've used as a sire father. I can tell you that. Yep, yep. Um, he is a bull that uh, carries, again, the cookie cutter prefix uh, uh, that we've talked about so much, but a, a different, a uh, little different cow family here. Um, renegade out of a helix from a delta. So uh, uh, he is a bull we've used as a mating sire, uh, a bull that we, we actually like and I like quite a bit for the combination of traits that he does have. Huge fat bull at 100 pounds of fat, big feed efficiency. Um, so, uh, yeah, he is he's definitely a bull that has been on our radar screen, a bull that we did use quite a bit of and uh, should have some sons in the pipeline yeah. six to eight months from now. And he's another of those bulls that's readily available. And uh, so, yeah, a bull that, like Rick said, we like a lot. I liked him because he didn't have frazzles in his pedigree. He used him quite a bit for mating sire. Yeah, we have a – Enrico is asking about Paus and maybe signed in a little after we'd gone through him, but we did touch on him earlier. And uh, a bull that is publicly available and on the trucks today, a high-ranking bull for us to select uh, – you know, going to be in the top 20 overall for TPI. Um, wonderful pedigree. Um, just a great all-around bull. And the BB Kappa casings, they're certainly appealing. Very user linear profile. Um, 
from top to bottom and uh, we use quite heavily as the sire father. So we are probably two months away from the first calves, maybe three. So um, we should have an opportunity for him to, to carry on another generation too. Awesome. Well, um, folks, it's been a pleasure for us. If you, if you got some questions and, and you post them out there on Facebook, we'll try to get to them. But uh, Joel's probably going to start giving us the cut sign. We're a little over uh, 60 minutes, but it's been a really fun time for us. I can tell you this, Rick, I like it a lot better than not having A, them have to look at me for 55 minutes, and B, having some relief of uh, has been a great, great uh, opportunity for me for us to tag team this, and it's been a lot of fun. So, uh, again, thank you for your support of Select Sires and, and, and all three of our product lines and, and across the globe. And uh, just know that we'll be out there every day trying to make the next generation for you. So, have a great afternoon, guys. Thank you. Yep. Thanks a lot. There, there was one late question here on Luster P. Uh, I agree. Beautiful calves. Love what we're seeing. Uh, but they're not old enough to be milking yet. So, we're, we're just going to have to wait on that, let them grow up. But uh, he's an exciting bull for – Hold and and, uh, and just an all-around type and production bull, regardless of any of the other characteristics he has. Uh, he's been making some really out, outstanding heifers, and uh, let him get old enough, and uh, we'll talk about him in a year as, as uh, two-year-olds and how he's performing at that point. But uh, Joel, I think you can uh, take us off the air. We can go back to work and uh, enjoy our weekends, and uh, probably be working through the weekend to keep digesting all this information and trying to to make a better cow, make a better, make a better bull for select sires and, and all of our customers around the world. So thanks for joining us guys. Thanks.